2015 Ducati Monster 821 Review The 2015 Ducati Monster 821 is powered by the same second-generation 821cc Testistretta 11-degree engine found in the Ducati Hypermoderate. It makes a reported 112 horsepower at 9,250 rpm and 65.9 foot-pounds of torque at 7,750 rpm. Like the Panagale, the motor acts as a stressed member of the chassis and is attached directly to the trellis frame. The Monster comes with three riding modes. Sport, Touring, and Urban. Touring and Sport both provide the full weight of the 112 horsepower motor, with Sport offering quicker throttle response to help you access that power with a little less flick of the wrist. Urban limits power to 75 ponies and decreases throttle response, which I found to be perfect for both wet conditions and maneuvering through dense city traffic. The Monster 821 uses an inverted 43mm Kiaba fork in the front and a single sax shock at the rear. The front isn't adjustable, but the rear is adjustable for spring preload and ribbon damping. Front braking is handled by twin, radially mounted Brembo, four-piston monoblock calipers grabbing dual 320mm discs. The rear single 245mm disc is mated to a single Brembo caliper. The 10-spoke aluminum wheels come wrapped in Pirelli Diablo Rosso 2 tires. The Monster 821 gets a reported 45 miles per gallon, comes in at a hefty 453 pounds wet, and retails for $11,495. More importantly, neither bike handles exceptionally well. They feel slightly unstable when cornering at speed, and, to me, always feel like the front wants to snap in on the direction you're turning. The low bar position also makes turning the bars from lock to lock in traffic situations difficult, and that's before you factor in the wrist pain they cause. Needless to say, I was surprised about the hype around the newest monsters upon their launch, and pretty skeptical about how I would like them, given Ducati's further departure from the aesthetic side come to love. Cut to mile 4 of my first ride on the new Monster 821, and all of my fears about the bike or thoughts about the aesthetics are pushed from my mind. The M821 is something entirely new and entirely different, and all of it for the better, at least in the riding experience. There is so much that is good with this bike, it's hard to know where to start. First of all, this liquid-cooled 821cc L-Twin is quite possibly my favorite motor in all of motorcycling. Cody, my friend from that 150 mile or so trek to my burger spot, works for Honda and rides a nicely upgraded Honda CB1000R. He'd spent some time on the previous iteration of the Monster and always found them underpowered, but after a few miles on the 821, was convinced it was faster than his 1000. In addition to having better low throttle fueling, the 821 has a little more low end torque than you'd expect which really throws you off when the power doesn't drop off above 6,500 rpm, but instead starts to pull harder. The new 30mm longer wheelbase, with a trail increased from 87mm to 93.2mm, has done wonders for the handling of the bike. On the 796, the front end feels like it wants to snap in on you mid-turn. Increasing trail normally makes a bike better in a straight line and worse at cornering, but in the case of the 821, it acts as somewhat of a steering damper and mellows out the twitchy handling of the previous iteration. This provides a massive boost in corner feel and corner confidence which, in real riding conditions, actually improves the cornering. The other big benefit of this new monster's longer footprint is that the bulk of that space was added to the rider cockpit to increase the seating room. I went through three seats on my 696 before I found one that didn't feel like the bike was hitting my sensitive bits like Mike Tyson on this speed bag, and the 796 is only barely better. The 821's 1.1 inch longer seat and more relaxed bar position take the monster from a ball busting, wrist wrecking naked to an all day comfortable bike, all without any noticeable loss of sport prowess. Everything on the M821 just seems to work better. The clutch is easier to operate, the headlight lights up the road more effectively, and fueling is smoother. The new instrument panel, while not the full-color TFT screen of the Monster 1200, is still a welcome upgrade over the calculator screen on the M796, and the new menu system is easy to operate. Even the non-adjustable suspension, while still a tad on the soft side, was sufficient for most everything I threw at it. 
The Ducati Monster 821 is a simply fantastic motorcycle. At $11,495, the bike is actually fairly well-priced when you consider its advantages over similarly priced Japanese leader bike options. However, it's also a price that will mean it never finds its way onto some people's short lists to begin with. If this thing were 10 grand, I would demand you save the extra money and declare this the best bike for all. As it stands, I'll leave it just as a motorcycle I've come to really love and one anyone would be lucky to own.